Okay, picture this. You're me a month and a half ago. You're submitting a video about how Halo Infinite's physics in the flight were not amazing. You covered a ton of stuff and it felt like a pretty solid video. Here's the problem. As time has gone on, it's become abundantly clear that not only is the physics in Halo Infinite lackluster, it's uh, it's probably the way that it's supposed to be. Hey there, do you like this beautiful shiny Cortana icon? Did you know you too could have one? That's right, my friends run this cool little business where they make decals over at Facebook Marketplace. If you want to get one for yourself, head over to scary.net slash Jarasunder, link in the description, and grab one. The Cortana decals five and a half inches by six inches, and she'll only cost you eight bucks, not including shipping. But if you want my high quality creation known as Flumby, he's three inches by four and a half, and he'll only cost you five dollars, also not including shipping. Subway doesn't even give away footlongs for that much anymore. Just as a heads up, this is US only, and they do actually do custom orders if you're interested in a custom order. Just make sure you let them know that Jera sent you. If you're watching this video right now, you may be asking yourself, how do I know that the intended experience for Halo Infinite's physics is pretty much just what we got in the flight? Well, I don't know for certain, but given that I tried shedding light on the topic, I hoped and prayed that someone at 343 would see it and acknowledge it, it seems that I was unsuccessful. Time passed, and I didn't really see an acknowledgement from 343, and I don't fault them for that. I think that either A, they didn't see it as they were busier with a myriad of other things from the flight that needed feedback, or B, it's just not high on their priority list of things to be changed for the game, and is essentially the intended experience. I'm hoping it's the former. As someone who has nothing but respect for 343 and who is very eager to get their hands on this experience they're planning to deliver, I want to state emphatically that all of my criticisms come from a place of love, and a yearning for the sandbox of Halo to return to its former glory, as opposed to the sort of narrowing it's had selectively over the last decade or so. With that out of the way, let's talk about what it is exactly that's bothering me. Can we all agree that the gravity hammer is absolutely fantastic? I just think it's so gosh darn neat. It's got the coolest name on the planet and it absolutely just sends things flying. I mean, just look at it in Halo 3. Now look at it in Halo Reach. Now Halo 4. Now in Halo 5. Wow, so amazing, isn't it? Then there's the Halo Infinite gravity hammer, which I think that late night gaming really just nailed the description of. So I'll just let him do the talking. If you didn't know any better, you'd assume that the gravity hammer of Halo Infinite was just a really heavy box falling. Can I just say, I think he's dead on. So on point, in fact, I think I'll try it myself. As you can see, this box, in fact, sounds exactly like the gravity hammer in Halo Infinite. Now that's obviously a bit sad and kind of a shame, but on another level, it's disappointing because it's a clear indication of the Gravity Hammer's new role in Halo Infinite. It seems to serve as essentially an explosive melee attack now. Think of it like if you had a non-friendly damaging rocket launcher you could shoot at the ground and kill everyone around you, and you've got the new Gravity Hammer. Now I don't hate the idea, I actually think it's quite interesting, frankly. It sort of tweaks the Halo sandbox in a neat way. But what I don't understand at this point is why it's even called a Gravity Hammer then. I'm not sure about you, but when I think of a hammer in a lethal way, I think of smacking someone with a hammer. Not getting near them and suggesting everyone nearby die as a result of me swinging the air. Again, I'm not even angry about the design of it, I'm just frustrated that they went and made this weapon idea into the gravity hammer, because it's a bit disingenuous to give something the exact same name that it previously had, and to then not give it any similar utility whatsoever. I should mention that the road we've arrived at in Infinite is really just the end of a path that the Gravity Hammer has been on for quite some time. Now, I want to mention that there have been a few cases where gravity has affected the surroundings somewhat upon its use in the Halo Infinite flight, but it doesn't appear as if it does anything the vast majority of the time. I recall several moments throughout Halo Infinite's flight where the Gravity Hammer did essentially nothing. It didn't propel me, it didn't fling anyone, it did almost nothing fun 90% of the time. I just sort of think that something that's referred to as the gravity hammer should probably, like, affect gravity. Is that asking a lot? 
There's a talking point regarding this problem as I've identified it, which mentions the repulsor equipment in Halo Infinite. This is an item that allows you to deflect projectiles sent towards you, and if you look down and activate it, it allows you to get a big boost into the air. It's really cool, and I'm grooving with what it's pitching, but what I'm genuinely failing to understand is exactly why this means that the gravity hammer might not need its actual feature set. I say this because even with these abilities, the repulsor is still heavily different to the gravity hammer. You could even strongly differentiate the two by making it so that looking down with the repulsor sends you directly into the opposite direction that you're currently facing, as long as it isn't toward an enemy, in which case it would simply send a projectile back at them. And then the gravity hammer could be what it's always been, a giant hammer of chaos. If I look down and jump with the hammer, let it send me, but not in a very precise way. Let it be something that's completely dynamic to how I choose to use it. This applies an interwoven skill in utilizing both of these items into the sandbox differently. Where the repulsor can act as a sort of super jump on top of its deflective ability, the gravity hammer sticks to its namesake and just warps gravity around you, sending you roughly where you're aiming away from. The trouble with that solution is, I think there's a real possibility that this issue is bigger than just a gravity hammer. You know what Halo's always been really good at? Explosions! I mean, honestly, is there anything cooler than when Mint Blitz goes flying like 8,000 feet and snipes some random unsuspecting victim? The answer is yes. It's Mint Blitz flying 16,000 feet and killing someone with a shade turret. Here's the problem. As it stands right now, it doesn't appear as if Halo Infinite supports grenade jumps, or at the very least, they're significantly more difficult to do. This is a huge problem because it affects a lot of the sandboxy interactivity that Halo has been characterized by. This means rocket jumping will be either impossible or significantly more difficult to do. This removes so many different trick jump options. But most importantly, it's going to put Mint Blitz out of a job. Won't someone think of the poor Australian boy? I don't like the idea that this stuff is being selectively stripped from the game experience, primarily because this is the Halo game I'm expected to play for the next decade which means it has huge implications for the long-term sandbox design and its diversity. In a lot of ways, it feels that many of these new nerfs to the sandbox are a deliberate effort to simplify map design in terms of eliminating trick spots or ways for people to break out of the map and whatnot. I hope I'm wrong and that this is genuinely a fluke. It'd be great to find out that this is ultimately addressed. Now, the next thing I'll discuss is something I don't believe deserves an entire subject, but I'm very disappointed to see. Friendly fire and player collision is gone. Sure, getting betrayed is lame, but you know what isn't? That moment when you accidentally run over a friend, and it's the funniest thing ever. Or doing trick jumps by standing on some random player's head. Or just plain sending your friends flying in custom games by betraying them over and over again. Player collision, you will be missed. Last but not least is causality. This is a critical component to a sandbox. I mentioned this in my prior physics video, but I want to recontextualize exactly what I said. I mentioned that the objects were interacting with you, but you weren't interacting with them. I don't think I articulated this quite enough. A good example that I unfortunately did not have footage of would be one of the barrels in Halo Infinite. You see, in Halo 3, I could stand on top of a barrel and the game would respond accordingly. One wrong move and the barrel could tip over, and maybe if I was lucky, I could land on it while I was rolling and do my best carnival balancing act. In Halo Infinite, if you try and jump on that very same barrel, you simply go through it. The object actually just moves out of your way when you land on top of it, and there's no collision with the top of it. This is extremely disappointing and has potentially huge ramifications for custom games and such. No more Jenga! Hey, who just applauded? Jenga's fun, shut up! It's gonna be a sad day for me in a lot of ways when Halo Infinite finally launches this December. I'm sure that there will be so many things absolutely blowing my mind, and I'll be enjoying the campaign like never before, but I'll feel a level of hollow, because I'll sit there in my silence just knowing that I won't be able to do my famous barrel balancing act. I'll miss you, you beautiful bastard. In conclusion, I hope we can achieve some level of acknowledgement from 343, and perhaps get at the least some sort of explanation for the decisions behind the physics being scaled back as they've been. There are some examples of things I mentioned here in the Infinite Flight, but I want to state emphatically that they appeared to be exceedingly rare and almost as if they were a fluke in the sandbox. Here's hoping I'm just wrong, and it's yet to come. The game does have another three months until release after all. 
Hey everyone, sorry for the pause in content. Some crazy stuff is happening in my life right now. Like, oh, I don't know. Moving across the country to the west coast is one example. I hope at the very least that you found value in this video. Even if you disagree about the necessity of Halo's physics simulation, maybe you walked away learning something. Let's take a moment to thank the people who chose to support me directly on Patreon. Kalen Christ at $5, Nuck and Futz at $1, David Tease at $10, Ghost Warrior at $5, and Screamy at $10. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you dig the new look, and I'll see you around.